It is a distinct honor for the Associated Student Speakers Program to have as our guest today Dr. Sidney Cohen, a leading authority on the controversial drug LSD. Dr. Cohen is presently an associate clinical professor at UCLA and is also chief of psychiatry services at the Wadsworth Veterans Hospital. He is also the author of the well-known book entitled The Beyond Within, which concerns much of the research in LSD. At this time, it gives me a distinct pleasure to be able to present to you Dr. Sidney Cohen. Last night, while I was uh, somewhat delirious from the uh, flu, I made a few notes to be sure that I'd uh, stay on the subject. And uh, I do hope to be able to uh, say what I want to say. I know that I can't cover everything. I know this is a very difficult talk to give because some of you are extremely knowledgeable about LSD and some of you are extremely ignorant of it. Perhaps I ought to start off with what I think are some of the realities and some of the illusions concerning LSD. Later, I want to touch on the complications that might occur because uh, this is an important thing for those of you who are taking LSD or who are considering it. One should have a little data. With regards to the realities, and these are my own realities, I would say that this chemical produces, oddly enough, a state extremely similar to the cosmic, transcendental, religious state known to us in the theological and philosophic literature. Naturally, there are differences. The fact that one has taken a chemical makes a difference. The fact that it lasts for hours rather than moments makes a difference. The fact that one hasn't paid the price of achieving the state makes a great difference because the price is part of the state. But I do believe that this technological advance of modern day rationalism has given us this most unrational of agents. I also believe that it's an extremely, item, uh, extremely important item for the study of the mind, both the sane, the insane, and if you will permit me, the unsane mind. It's a, de a delicious tool for the study of mood changes, of perceptual changes, of changes in cognition and of our sense of subjective time. In case some of you wonder what unsanity is, unsanity might be defined as organized insanity. In other words, loss of self, dissociation, but with some intactness. The third reality about LSD is that its future is miserable. 
We are seeing in the past few years an accelerating decay in its use. We are seeing accidents happen. We are frightening the public. We are getting laws passed. We are not using the anthropological approach of insinuating a valuable drug of this sort into our culture. We are, we are becoming frightened by it, if not us, those people out there. One other thing that the LSD teaches me, and perhaps you, is the enormity of the human potential. Those of you who have read descriptions of the LSD state must be impressed by the lushness of what comes forth from, if you'll pardon the expression, the unconscious. The stuff that we never knew existed the creativity within us is enormous and is transiently released in some of the fantasies connected with LSD. Another reality that I must emphasize because I think some of you will disagree is that the LSD experience is only a beginning. It is not an end. It is a beginning of a beginning. You are not struck by lightning, having had LSD, and thereafter are a different person. Oh no, the people who have had such experiences spontaneously tell us this, and it is true of LSD, I have seen it happen. People have said to me, I can't be the same miserable creature I used to be. I've seen the glory. And off they go in their old behavioral pattern. It's an opportunity for change, it's not change itself. Now let me go over to my list of illusions about LSD. And here I anticipate a good deal of disagreement, but these are the results of a dozen years of thinking about it, for me. There is the illusion <coughs> that LSD is the real reality, that this reality is a facade, a game, a nothing. Indeed, when one is in the throes of the LSD state, this seems to be so. But why is it so? It's so because the critical function of the ego is in abeyance. We, we cannot discriminate. Everything is realer than real. Colors are brighter than they are. But this is only because we cannot evaluate, discriminate, think about that reality has a reality, but it isn't necessarily at all the real reality. Another reality is that the LSD subcultures have a sort of hierarchy of the high. That is, if you've never taken LSD, you're a nothing. If you've only taken uh, 100 or 200 micrograms, well, you don't know much about LSD. When you get up to about five or 600 micrograms, well, you might well have been there. 
But those fellows who have been way out with 1,500 micrograms, they really are in a class by themselves. Illusion, completely unreal. I have spoken to people, you know, it said, the first thing that people tell me when they come to see me when they get into trouble with LSD is, uh, have you ever taken it? Because they won't even talk to me unless I have. They don't, uh, I, I don't understand what they're saying. So I say, yes, I have, and indeed I have. And uh, they will not even speak to those who have not had the acid. This, I think, is uh, chemical snobbery. <laughs> they say, you don't know what I'm talking about. As a matter of fact, I have met people and talked with them. I've talked to Tillich, and I've talked to Miller, and I've talked to a few others who know exactly what I'm talking about when I describe the LSD state. So this is, I do believe, an illusion. Some folks think that having had LSD and having seen the great white light of God that this, therefore, has changed all their personal problems. That's not so at all. Uh, the great possibility is that they have bypassed all the, uh, their personal issues and they have uh, gone on to this other route of psychedelic bliss. A wonderful state, a state that under judicious conditions should be uh, experienced, but don't think that you have been cleared, as they used to say in Dianetics, by having had one or more LSD experiences. And then, of course, there are many people who come back to us and say, well, it's pretty obvious. From where I was under LSD, all life is a game. I saw all my role playing, and I saw that it isn't worthwhile. I agree with them. Life is a game. And I tell them the important thing is to know what game you're playing, not to try to evade the game, because the LSD game is a game, too. And uh, if you had seen what I saw last week, an acid test party where people were dressed as caricatures of human beings, you could easily determine that this was one of the uniforms of the game. Another illusion that comes back to some people, not all, is that the rational life the life of logic and reason is valueless or unworthy. It's the rich emotional thing that happens with LSD that counts, the only thing that counts. I must say no to that. I must say that our three or four hundred years of scientific of the scientific revolution has done a great deal for humanity and that it is important and that somehow there must be a fusion of reason and this other thing which we might call unreason 
certainly we have been too concerned perhaps with the rational but we mustn't abrogate it in favor of the completely irrational we must come back to the rational I'll get to that in a moment then there's a sort of paranoid notion among some LSD habitués that the tobacco and alcohol establishment has provoked the legislation against LSD. They fear that they're going to be uh, demolished because LSD is, of course, so much better. This is real paranoia. Uh, in fact, some of you may think that I'm part of the establishment talking now, trying to give you as honest and direct a story of LSD as I can. Uh, I can only say I'm not part of the establishment. Uh, but I've heard people say this to me, that the alcohol, the liquor, and the uh, tobacco interests are against any legalization of LSD because it would put them out of business. I've talked to uh, these people occasionally. They don't even know what LSD is. The next illusion that some people entertain is that since they've had a ball with a few LSD experiences, it, it can go, it'll go on that way. It'll always be a beautific state. This isn't necessarily so. It can catch up with you and you can get into the throes of something pretty hellish. Uh, I don't want to get into the details of why they should be, but believe me, it's so. Then, and this may surprise you, or it may not, there are people who believe that this is the state one should live in, the LSD state, forever. This is the way people should live. As I said before, I don't think so. And from my reading of the Samadhi, the Satori, the Nirvana, and so forth, I find that this is confirmed. They come back here to live this life using what they have learned out there and applying it here. But there are people and in recent weeks I found a few who are in a chronic state of LSD intoxication. They have inexhaustible access to the drug and they have, well, what they do is they beat the tolerance effects of the drug. You may know that if you take 100 micrograms a day for three days by the third day nothing happens. Well, what they do is they, t they start with 250 on Monday. On Tuesday, they're up to 500. On Wednesday, they go to 1,000. On Thursday, 2,000. On Friday, 4,000. In other words, they keep upping the ante. Really, these figures are, uh, are not uh, accurate because they just keep popping the caps into their mouth. And then they take uh, some sleeping pills to sleep it off and start it all over again. This is chronic LSD intoxication. They're as drunk as with alcohol. Then I've also encountered this illusion. And not infrequently, to wit, if only the psychiatrists would stay away, there wouldn't be any complications. Uh, believe me, the psychiatrists aren't seeking out 
LSD uh, disasters. They are bring, being brought to the NPI, to the emergency room, to the morgue, whatever. I don't look for them. They come to me. So this is a, a foolish illusion. And yet, it is propounded that this is so. Well, from what I've said, you might wonder, how do I feel about uh, the drug? Uh, I can only reiterate, I, I feel it has an enormous potential. I feel that its best friends are its greatest enemies. I feel that we're doing the wrong thing with it. I think things will get worse before they get better. And uh, I don't know how it will work out. Why is LSD so attractive to us right now? Well, this is hard to answer. It may not be uh, that it's the zeitgeist of the time that uh, makes it attractive. It may be that the, we know these drugs have been available to many cultures over the centuries. Uh, I'm not uh, sold on the fact that we are so alienated and have such anomie that LSD just meshes in with the times. Uh, I do believe that LSD does produce a certain desirable other state, but I think it might have happened at any time. Well, I've got a lot more to say. In fact, I really ought to say something about some of the complications I've seen. But what I'd rather do is find out what you want to know. So suppose you ask me questions and I'll try to answer them. Yes, there are some people who should never take LSD because of the possibility that something might happen. Who are these people? One, a, what, what we call an ambulatory schizophrenic, a fellow who's getting along. There are, there are a few of you in the room here. Uh, believe me, maybe there's one or two on the platform. <laughs> uh, no insult, you see. It's just that he, his thinking is schizoid and he's percolating along and the LSD might flip such a person. Who else shouldn't take LSD? The immature individual, the unstable individual. They should not take LSD because it will flip them like as though they had no foundation. The person who should take LSD is a person who has through a lifetime, prepared himself for this experience. Uh, the Harris Act went into effect February 1st. It's a federal uh, law regarding barbiturates, amphetamines, and LSD, and a few other hallucinogens. It makes it felonious to manufacture, sell, give away, transport, uh, possess in large quantities a drug like LSD. Uh, I, if you possess LSD in a, in a quantity in your home, and you, and you, it's the, the burden of proof is on the state to prove that you didn't intend to use it for yourself or your family or your animals. Is that satisfactory?
I didn't get the whole question. Well, there are so many variables <coughs> connected with the LSD experience, and it is a stress, it's a strenuous thing, especially in the doses which are being used outside, uh, that it's hard to answer that question. If it's given without protection, if it's given in a situation of insecurity, if something obnoxious happens during the event, it can change the entire experience so that these are the things that could make one experience uh, disastrous, even the 13th. What are some of the dangers? Potentials. Well, we hope that it can be used for psychotherapeutic gain in certain types of individuals. We hope, for example, that with massive doses of LSD, we can produce a chemical transcendental state which will alter the drinking pattern of an alcoholic, a drug addict this sort of thing. We also hope that in smaller doses it will enha could enhance psychotherapy. We hope to, uh, to learn a good deal about the, the chemistry of the mind with it. This is the sort of thing that uh, makes it a, a drug of, of some importance to us. The question was, um, how, what could we do to uh, make LSD a part of our Western culture? And this is a real tough one. Uh, and yet, our culture is constantly changing, uh, at, even at a rapid clip. Uh, I can't directly answer that. All I can say is that if we would use the anthropological approach of gradually demonstrating the goodness of the thing and not demonstrating the uh, malignancy of it, this would be the hope for me. There was a piece in the paper today about somebody under the influence of LSD uh, making a row on a plane to San Francisco. This is uh, the sort of thing that's uh, not very good. The, these uh, these acid tests that go on with these bizarre individuals, I don't think do much good. This sort of thing is what I object to. Well, the uh, the question was, uh, what about the uh, peyote in the Native American church? Well, there's an instance where uh, an, an, an hallucinogen has been gradually uh, brought into the culture successfully. So the thing is not hopeless. Uh, I think that it's all to the good. It seems to decrease alcoholism in these people. Uh, I'm for it. Um, I wonder, I hardly can visualize an LSD church. Um, I think the thing has gone a little too far for that. But um, there is a white uh, branch of the Native American church, in case you're interested, and uh, they, may, uh, they may spread. Uh, 
I didn't hear a word of that. Yes. Is there a special type of person who would be attracted to LSD? There are two types of people who, at least two, who are attracted to LSD, the right kind and the wrong kind. Uh, unfortunately, the, the kind I described before, the schizoid individual who, want, who feels a sort of barrier between him and people and wants to become more normal, more like people, want is attracted. The fellow who wants a mi magical cure for his emotional immaturity is attracted. Th these are the wrong kind. The right kind is the person who through many years, I won't say of meditation, but of study and contemplation and consideration of the issues, finally comes to the point where he thinks he's ready to take LSD. I only wish there were an opportunity for him to do so under, if you wish, non-medical conditions. Uh, this is all right with me, but I don't see this coming up in the future. Go ahead. A uh, very, f uh, does LSD have any adverse physical effects? The adverse physical effects are minimal. Uh, there have been a few convulsions reported. Uh, I would not give it to an epileptic. I would not give it to a person who is, has recently had a, uh, a uh, stroke or a, hot, uh, or a coronary. But uh, it's amazing to me how few adverse physical effects there are. This this is uh, not the issue. The issue is the adverse psychological effects. <laughs> uh, uh, marijuana is a weak sister. It's an hallucinogen. I don't think it gives you any immunity to LSD. LSD is a real potent kick. Uh, did you ask whether what I thought of marijuana? Well, I haven't seen any adverse effects from marijuana. Uh, yeah, well, I have seen one. I've seen a kid, uh, 16 or 17 years old, who uh, solved all his problems by smoking marijuana. In other words, he didn't, uh, 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 instead of dealing with his problems, he went off and smoked marijuana, and uh, this, I think, is not a proper way to deal with life. But I haven't seen any psychotic reactions, as I have with LSD. Uh, I, uh, I think the worst thing that can be said about marijuana is that it's illegal. It carries a rat. LSD or any hallucinogen. Thank you. I'm not going to ask the other question. That's a, a worthy question. I uh, have never pushed LSD. I have never. Uh, I have never uh, said you ought to take this. It's the greatest. Uh, I think that each person should make this decision for himself. I think. 
it's a great responsibility to uh, put pressure on a person to take LSD. Uh, I think a person who is comfortable enjoys this great, wonderful life that we have outside uh, can do well without the LSD experience. I, I want to underline what I just said. Uh, don't try to persuade anybody to take LSD. You, uh, their reasons for not taking it may be unconscious, but very valid. I think that's a nasty thing to do. After effects, even when you're not on the drug. Uh, do you mean that uh, the uh, effects that come back after the drug? Oh, yes. There is an interesting recrudescence of um, the LSD state in some individuals after days, hours, or weeks afterwards. And I can uh, mention one chap who um, uh, had a rather catastrophic experience with morning lorry seed. He had a um, he had his 300 or so seeds. Uh, he uh, had an excellent time of it and uh, recovered. But a few days later, it came back. And it kept going away and coming back, and going away and coming back. And one Sunday morning, he uh, took a few extension courses right here at UCLA, by the way. One Sunday morning, his father heard him get up at about four o'clock in the morning he had a Sunday morning job at some uh, hamburger joint, and he didn't think much of that. But he took his car and drove it, not in the direction of his job, but up a steep hill, and went down that hill at over 100 miles an hour and crashed into a house. The only assumption we can make is that he thought he was going crazy and decided to end it all. So these... Re Recrudescences can be sometimes pleasant, occasionally unpleasant. <coughs> uh, this interesting question uh, came up already. Um, I understand you folks are not leaving because of the nature of the question uh, to go out and uh, perform criminal acts under the uh, effect of LSD. I understand you have classes, so proceed. I was involved in a trial, which might interest you. There were two geniuses uh, who obtained innumerable amounts of LSD and uh, made their living selling it. They were also taking enormous amounts, uh, oh, 500, 1,000 micrograms a couple of times a week. <coughs> In addition, they made the strategic error of selling a kilogram of heroin to a narcotics agent. Uh, they were not, this was before the Harris Act came into effect, and they weren't even prosecuted for, the, for their LSD uh, uh, possession. But their defense was they didn't know what they were doing. They were under the influence. They want, 
they, they felt very beautific. They wanted to do good to everybody. They wanted everybody to be happy. So they wanted people who needed heroin to have heroin. It didn't work. <laughs> How many people have bad reactions under good conditions? <coughs> Six years ago, I did a study in which I inquired into this issue of how many research investigators have run into bad reactions with LSD and mescaline. And uh, this, the reports uh, involve some 25,000 administrations of the drug. This was under research conditions where the people were protected, screened, and uh, made to feel secure. This, by the way, is in opposition to the notion that if you take LSD in a hospital, you have a horrible time of it. Not so. Uh, I found an amazingly low number of adverse reactions under those conditions. The adverse reactions that I'm reporting uh, next month have all been from the non-medical use of LSD. Uh, these have been flooding in. Uh, do I have to tell you that uh, at one time last month, 15% of the individuals at the NPI were there because of LSD reactions? Or should I say that uh, of 150 psychiatrists in the West Los Angeles Beverly Hills area who were queried whether they had seen one or more LSD uh, difficulties, one third of them said they had. So this is, now what percentage this is of the total number who've taken LSD, I have no idea. But uh, the, the, the growth of these things is substantial. Of the, uh, do you mean the Millbrook? Uh, I'm not sure I'm familiar with it. Using LSD? Well, I don't know enough about it to comment on it. Uh, Alpert and Leary used to be pretty far out in their position. Now, uh, things have come to a pass where they're, they're almost moderate in, in some of the things they're saying, and we're running into uh, much further out things. We have time for one more question. You want to try it? We really don't know. Uh, I've never heard of a direct death from LSD. Uh, my record is this 4,000 micrograms that uh, the chap told me about. But don't forget that he had built up a tolerance by upping the dose each day. Uh, I don't know how much it'll take to kill you. Uh, that is not the danger. Thank you very much.